the definition of ionizing radiation isn't one you have to learn, but it's any radiation that has enough energy to break apart the covalent bonds in water. So bubbles don't seem to have enough energy and machine gun bullets don't seem to have enough energy. What about red light? Does that have enough energy to break apart those intramolecular bonds? No, doesn't look like it. Let's try higher energy green light. Nope, still no breaking of those covalent bonds. Ionizing radiation must have a higher energy than blue light as well. It turns out, well, you can't see anything coming out. It's ultraviolet light. It turns out that ultraviolet light has enough energy to break the covalent bonds in the water molecule. And it's important to mention it's not the hydrogen bonds being broken here. So any electromagnetic radiation with higher energy than ultraviolet is known as ionizing radiation. Oh, poor fishes. We can't see ultraviolet. What's that noise? Oh, another zombie. Well, Dr. Atkinson is firing the gun, but zombies seem to be so desiccated, so dry, there's not much water there. I'm going to switch it to my shark gun. Yes. So you need to know the alpha, beta and gamma radiation, and there's actually neutron radiation as well, not pictured. Alpha is two protons, two neutrons, beta is a fast moving electron, and gamma is electromagnetic rays. Now when these hit the human body, they all have enough energy to ionize something in the human body. Maybe it's water, maybe it's meat, maybe it's protein, maybe it's DNA. And so when the radiation has ionized something, an electron may be released. And if that electron hits the O2 molecule, it becomes the O2 minus radical, the so-called superoxide radical. So a radical, well, that's a species, and that could be an atom, ion, or molecule, with an unpaired valence electron. Electrons like to go around in pairs, and if there's a single electron, it's going to want to grab an electron from somewhere else. It's going to act like an oxidizing agent. Looking at the hydroxide ion, ionizing radiation can come in and knock off one of these valence electrons here. An electron can be removed from this hydroxide ion. leaving behind this here, which is the hydroxyl radical. Now notice this is unstable. There's a single electron here. It's a radical. Anything that comes near this may lose an electron. This is an oxidizing agent. Uh, and hopefully the thing that loses an electron isn't something important in your body, otherwise this is going to cause trouble for you. Now, you could also argue that this is a free radical as well. Well, what of the other free radical you need to know? Here's the oxygen molecule. Now, what can happen? That can gain an electron. So electrons are flying around when ionizing radiation hits you electrons coming off of other molecules. So if one can be swept up by this oxygen molecule, you're going to make what's called the superoxide radical. Now, I don't think we're going to ask you for these Lewis structures. Uh, in fact, the internet is kind of controversial about what this one should be. And so once again, there's an electron seems to be missing here. And so this is an oxidizing agent. It wants to be itself reduced. Reduction is gain of electrons. Again, this is an oxidizing agent. It wants to be reduced. Reduction is gain. So it wants to gain electrons here. Now that does look strange. Gaining electrons would make O2, 2 minus, but that exists as well. But it's not part of the syllabus. It's my understanding you just need to know the name of the superoxide radical, the hydroxyl radical, and the effects that they have, uh, which include initiating chain reactions that can damage DNA and enzymes in living cells.